الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. So today I have a, a quick trivia question. What topic is there which is only mentioned in the Quran in the recitation of yesterday and today, which is 16th juz and the 17th juz? It is uniquely mentioned only twice in the Quran, occurs once in the 16th juz, and occurs once in the 17th juz. <clears throat> what is that? I heard it. Yes, Jazakallah khair. Brother Qadr Hussain. Okay. One free cup of tea for you this Friday, inshallah. Okay? <laughs> As a gift. <laughs> no, not during Juma. In the evening, inshallah. <clears throat> so, yes. Ya'juj and Ma'juj. Now, this is something that occurs uh, two places in the Quran. <coughs> the first occurrence was yesterday when we read the story of Dhul Karnayn in Surah Kahf. In which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that when Dhul Qarnayn was traveling on his travels, he came across a people who they had a trouble communication, uh, communicating with each other, but somehow they figured to get their message across. And their problem was that they said that we have a problem. They said, Qalu ya Dhul Qarnayn, inna ya'juj wa ma'juj. Um, ya'juj and ma'juj are doing great mischief in the land. Shall we then pay you a tribute? in order that you might erect a barrier between us and them. He said, <coughs> that in which my Lord has established me is better. Meaning, I don't need any payment from you. I will do it for you because this is my responsibility and Allah has given me this. And uh, I will take care of this. So, but you have to help me with manpower. Help me with strength of men. I will erect between you and them a barrier. Give me pieces of iron. Then, when he had filled up the gap between the two mountain cliffs, he said, blow till when he made it red as fire. So, basically, they put a metal in there, and they melted it all. And uh, then he said, bring me molten copper to pour over it. So this was a very, very strong wall made of iron and copper, which is melted together to become one in order to find, form a barrier. So they were made powerless to scale it or dig through it. So they cannot climb over it and they cannot dig through it. Dhul Qarnayn said, this is a mercy from my Lord, but when the promise of my Lord comes, he shall level it down to the ground and the promise of my Lord is ever true. So Dhul Qarnayn knows, he says, look, I built you this wall, but this wall is only going to last as long as Allah wills. I cannot help you forever. But let's, say how, let's see how long it will last. But inshallah, this is good enough for a long time. Now, the Prophet ﷺ told us, <coughs> sorry, so that was in yesterday's recitation. In today's recitation, which is coming up, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَحَرَامٌ عَلَىٰ قَرِيَةٍ أَهْلَكْنَاهَا أَنَّهُمْ لَا يَرْجِعُونَ that it is haram, it is not possible, it is not allowed for any nation to resurge, to, to revive itself. Once we have destroyed it, it is impossible. Hatta idha futihat ya'juj wa ma'juj, meaning this rule will remain in place until a time comes when the ya'juj and ma'juj come out. Wahum min kulli hadabin yansilun, and they will come out of every hole. And they will come swarming, like waves coming, like waves coming. So this is the mention of it in the Quran, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاقْتَرَبَ الْوَعْدُ الْحَقِّ That when this happens, then this means that the hour has come near. The hour has come near. For Ya'juj and Ma'juj are one of the ten major signs <coughs> of the Day of Judgment. Now, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, tells us this in the Quran. And then the Prophet sallallahu gave us some more details. He said that Ya'juj and Ma'juj, they are locked behind this. So who are they? Uh, the scholars looking at all the evidences. And by the way, the, uh, I was looking at what the Bible says about Ya'juj and Ma'juj as well. And they have some slight uh, variations in this matter. But basically, Ya'juj and Ma'juj are believed to be sons of Adam alayhi salam. They are sons of Adam alayhi salam. Um, what kind they are, the Prophet sallallahu said that their eyes are small 
and their faces are like beaten shields, as if you have hammered a shield and made it flat. So this description generally fits people who come from the Far East. So for a long time, people used to believe that the Great Wall of China is the wall that Zulkarnain built, and the people living behind it are Ya'juj and Ma'juj. So the, obviously, the Great Wall of China is not impossible to, to cross over, and there have been lots of that happen, and it's not made of iron and copper, and we are able to mix with them, and they're able to mix with us. <coughs> but the wall of Ya'juj and Ma'juj does not allow any type of going across, does not allow going across. So some of the scholars have said that this is something which is within the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his knowledge, even though from a scientific perspective, most people will say that it is impossible for any large group of people to be living anywhere on earth now and we don't know about it. And in fact, the, the hadith mentioned that when they will come out, they will come upon a lake and they will, the first of them will start to drink from it and the last of it will say that there used to be water here once. So if this is such a large group of people, and in one hadith the Prophet wasallam mentioned that 999% or 999 out of 1000 is the proportion of the Ya'juj and Ma'juj versus the rest of the people. So this is a very, very huge number. So is it possible that they are still living somewhere on top of the earth? Scientifically, no. But we don't have to really explain everything from a scientific perspective. We simply believe it. Is it impossible that there is something somewhere that we don't know? It is actually, it does happen that we do find new things on earth that we didn't know before. So we leave it at that. We don't have to understand everything from that perspective. However, the Prophet ﷺ one day, <coughs> he said that, he came to his wife and he said that the Arabs, woe to the Arabs, from a threat which is coming near. And that is that a hole the size, so he put together his index finger and his thumb, he said a, a hole a size of this has opened up in the wall that Zulkarnain built. Meaning that they are constantly digging. And in one hadith the Prophet said, they're every day they're trying to get out of it and they're trying to dig through it. And every day when a little opening opens up, their foreman or their manager tells them, okay, come back tomorrow and we'll continue where we left off. But when they come back tomorrow, by the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the wall regenerates and they have to dig all over again. But there will come a time when this uh, foreman or manager will say to them that inshallah, tomorrow we will come back and pick up from where we left off. And the day that they, he says that, the next day when they will come, they will find it to be where they left it the day before. And once that happens, then they will be able to bore through it and then they will start to come out. Now, when they come out, the Prophet ﷺ said that he met Isa alayhi salam in Mi'raj and he, they had a discussion. And in that, Isa alayhi salam said that when Ya'juj and Ma'juj will come out, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell me to take his servants into the mountain of Tur. Basically, go and hide over there because there's no one that can fight these people. So they will basically come and completely swarm the earth. Now, <coughs> If you have ever, you know, lived through the, um, the COVID pandemic, right? So imagine a catastrophe that affects the earth much greater than that. That there is this destructive nation that has come and taken over the entire earth. It's going to be a very difficult test that even Isa alayhi salam is not able to deal with this. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him, take him up, take the people up. Now they will be there for as long as Allah wills then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send a disease upon them. And this disease will start to kill them left and right and they will fall over. But their bodies are so much that they're covering the earth. The Prophet wasallam said, by the one in whose hand is my soul, the beast of earth will grow fat from their flesh. But there is still so much more that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send birds and the birds will come and they will start to pick up their bodies and throw them where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes and the rain will come and the rain, because before the rain, the earth is filthy from all the decaying bodies of Ya'juj and Ma'juj. 
So in the biblical tradition, it is mentioned that the people that remain after Ya'juj and Ma'juj, for seven years, they will make fires from the bows and arrows of Ya'juj and Ma'juj, meaning they left behind so much uh, wooden ad, uh, ammo, which is bows and arrows, if you just burn them, you can make fires for seven years for all of the people. That's how many they are. So um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will then, uh, Isa alayhi salam will make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take care of them. Allah will give them a disease. They will die. <coughs> the birds will come and take their bodies. And then a rain will come from the sky. And this rain will be like no rain ever before. It will cleanse the earth to such a level that it will be like a mirror, a shining mirror, complete clean. And then Isa alayhi salam will come out and those will be the years of peace and harmony on earth under the uh, leadership of Isa alayhi salam. And then the world will descend deeper and deeper into chaos after that until the day of judgment will be established. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all the tawfiq to be protected from such fitan. Now these are the big fitan. They are tiny fitan that affect us when they are tiny in comparison, but they affect us. They really, you know, shake us just like COVID pandemic came. Who could have imagined something so small? It basically shut down the entire earth. And literally you could say the entire earth has to retreat and hide, right? You could have never imagined that two weeks before it happened, but then it happened. So uh, what is possible for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is beyond our comprehension. We leave it at that and we say, we believe in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik nashad wa la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayhi.